This demonstration features the size 1 IBT with mixing box. Your model may have variances in some components and the number of modules, depending on your configuration. Before startup, it's important to review the operation and installation manual, as well as the wiring schematics, to familiarize yourself with the components and general layout of the IBT. Now is a good time to pull up the startup and maintenance documentation sheet at the back of the manual, on which you should document the startup data for future reference. Ensure all field wiring connections have been completed. Your operation and installation manual will provide you with details and schematics of your specific connections. Also, make sure the voltage on the site matches the voltage shown on the unit label, motor label, and wiring schematic. With the power off, Turn the wheel by hand to ensure it spins freely. This is also a good time to ensure your pulleys are aligned and the belt tension is correct. Refer to your operation and installation manual for belt tension specifications. You can now turn the disconnect on and verify control voltage as well as motor voltage. Verify that there are no faults on the HMI. If faults are present, refer to the manual and clear errors before proceeding. Turn on the blower using the HMI as shown, or using the field wired start command. Note that if an intake damper is present, there will be a delay before the blower starts. The IBT board will display a red light while the damper is opening. Once the blower starts, Verify its rotation and ensure the motor amp draw is not exceeding the full load amperage of the motor. If your unit is equipped with a contactor, you should check the motor amperage directly off the contactor. If your unit is equipped with variable frequency drives, you may check the motor amperage by accessing the HMI menu, selecting Service, enter the password 1234, then Inputs, VFD Status. At this point, use your tachometer to measure the RPM of the blower. Refer to your manual for the recommended RPM for your configuration and for the instructions on how to adjust the RPMs. If possible, check the gas supply pressure at the gas tap upstream of the unit. The inlet pressure should be 7 to 14 inches water column on natural gas and 11 to 14 inches water column on propane gas. Once pressure has been verified, open the field installed manual gas shutoff valve as well as the manual valve on the gas manifold. Verify that the pressure on the gauge is between 7 and 14 inches water column. Check the inlet to all of the firing tubes on the furnace and ensure that they are all clear of foreign debris and line up properly with each nozzle of the gas manifold. Next, the low fire gas pressure needs to be adjusted. To do so, first access the menu, then select Service, enter the password 1234, select Test Menu, Test Heating, Run Low Fire Test, All Stages. Allow the furnace to light. Note that there is a one minute pre-purge before the furnace attempts to light. Upon successfully sensing flame at the uppermost firing tube, the unit will fire at full high fire for a period of 17 seconds. At the end of this time sequence, it will modulate down to low fire until the low fire test is aborted. After it has been verified that the furnace is lighting off properly, the manifold gas pressure should be adjusted to job site conditions. The on-off gas valve is adjusted at the factory for average gas conditions. Now you are ready to set your high fire pressure. This is achieved by configuring the HMI to high fire mode. First, access the menu. Then select Service. Enter the password 1234. Select Test Menu. Test Heating. Run High Fire Test. Stages, all. 
With all burners lit, set the manifold gas pressure on the non-modulating stages if present. Turn the inner adjustment screw clockwise to increase the gas pressure and counterclockwise to decrease pressure. Pressure should be adjusted to equal 3.5 inches water column on natural gas and 10 inches water column for propane. Next, remove the cover of the Maxitrol modulating valve. To adjust the high fire pressure, press button number 1 until the LED light is solid red, then release. The valve is now in high fire setting mode. Buttons 1 and 2 are now used to set desired high fire settings. Press once for slight adjustment or hold for a large adjustment. Button 1 increases pressure. Button 2 decreases pressure. While viewing the gauge, the pressure should be adjusted to equal 3.5 inches water column for natural gas and 10 inches water column for propane. Save the high fire setting by simultaneously holding down button 1 and 2 until the LED light turns off. Press the abort button on the HMI to exit high fire mode. Next, the low fire gas pressure needs to be adjusted. From the main screen on the HMI, first access the menu. Then select service. Enter the password 1234. Select Test Menu, Test Heating, Run Low Fire Test, All Stages. Next, press and hold button 2 until the LED light blinks red, then release. The valve is now in low fire setting mode. Buttons 1 and 2 are now used to set desired low fire settings. Button 1 increases pressure. Button 2 decreases pressure. While viewing the gauge, the pressure should be adjusted to equal 0.15 inches water column for natural gas and 0.75 inches water column for propane. If the low fire setting cannot be achieved due to flame dropping back into the orifice, set pressure as low as possible while maintaining a normal flame. Save the low fire setting by simultaneously holding down button 1 and 2 until the blinking LED light turns off. Reinstall the cover on the modulating gas valve and reinstall caps on the on-off gas valves. A final gas leak check should be performed to verify all gas piping and components are leak free. Your heater is now ready for use. For questions anytime during the IBT startup, please contact CAS Service.